Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to look at the type 2 sum of squares. Some call it the partial type 2 sum of squares. To me, I just call it the type 2 sum of squares. And again, we're in the multi, uh, multiple linear regression setting, which is, which is this, y equals x beta, where this has uh, beta 0 through beta k. And this is the error terms. Since we're going to try to develop some distributional properties of the type 2 sum of squares, we need to make some distribution assumptions, and we're going to do that on the error term. Multivariate normal with mean zero, variance, covariance, matrix, this. Now, the general notation um, is this. R is beta 2, and remember this is a vector, and beta 1, this is a vector. So really, it's the increase in the sum of squares regression when the, all these beta coefficients are added to the model containing all these beta coefficients. And so this is the general notation that we talked about in the previous video, uh, BV, PV28. Um, and it's this. So it's the sum of squares regression with all the beta parameters in minus the sum of squares regression with just the, the first set of beta parameters. All right? And now since this is a vector, it can be any length from one to a lot. In the same way here, it can be one to a lot. Right? This is, it's just a general notation. And we introduced that in the previous video. So in the type 2 sum of squares, what it is in... Now the notation I'm using here is not, you know, it's not consistent across books and, and professors. So R beta 1 and then beta minus 1 and it's a vector. And what this represents is this is one parameter beta 1 and this is all the other parameters except for 1. Okay, and this represents the sum of squares with all the beta parameters in it minus the sum of squares with all the beta parameters except for one, the you know, beta one. And again, beta one is all of them, um, but the beta, we're missing beta one here. Now here, beta two is um, by itself, and this beta vector is all of them but beta two. So that's what the minus two is. So it's the sum of squares regression with all the beta parameters in it, minus the sum of squares regression with all the beta parameters minus 2. And we keep going until we get to all k beta parameters. K beta, r k, r beta k given beta minus k. And this is a vector. So this is all the beta parameters but the kth one. And it's the sum of squares regression with all the beta parameters minus sum of squares regression with all of them except for the kth one. And so we're really seeing how what the increase is in this sum of squares regression with when we add beta k to the model as opposed to the model without it. And that's that's it. That's type two sum of squares. So it's the you know some some might call this sequential type two sum of squares. I just call it type two sum of squares. Now really, since we're going to develop. Uh, distributional properties, we need to convert this to matrix notation. We don't need to, but it sure makes it easier. So, uh, generically, R beta I, and this is all the betas except for the ith one, so this actually can represent any one of these previous type 2 sum of squares, right? We just say beta I instead of each individual beta. Now this is the sum of squares regression with all of them, right? We're putting them all in the model. Sum of squares regression without the ith beta term in there. Okay. Now if you go to previous video 28, we write out the full model and we write out the reduced model and we look at it and we develop the hat matrix and etc. And the sum of squares regression was this. And then the sum of squares regression without that ith term is this. This represents the hat matrix from the model without that ith beta term in there. Then we left factor out and right factor out y's. 
and what's left the J's cancel and we're left with this now notice that this is the hat matrix for the full uh, model you know so it's item potent it's symmetric it's a perpendicular projection matrix under the column space of X the you know where X is uh, rank K plus one here this is actually the hat matrix for the design matrix you know or the column space of X when the ith beta regressor or ith beta term is not in there so it's also a perpendicular projection matrix it's symmetric it's item potent and so and it's actually a subset the calm space of this is a is a subset of the calm space of the full hat matrix right because it's really everything but one column missing so right there if you were to go and watch a video i called perpendicular projection matrices you we would know instantly that this is a perpendicular projection matrix so when you pre-multiply some vector dangling in our in space it's going to project it to the column space of x but perpendicular or orthogonal to this column space so it's going to lie in the column space of x the full model so notes the this is symmetric and you can do that you can take it in but they're their projection mate they're the hat matrix for the respective model and we've shown that they're symmetric it is a, the column space of this is a subset of the column space of h which is equal to the column space of x um, it's item potent and you multiply this out now h times h minus i is h minus i because anything like H is a perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X. So if there's a vector that lies in the column space of X, then it projects it back down onto itself. And this lies in the column space of X because it's all of them but just one column, so it has to be. So, and the same here, and, and of course that projects back onto itself. Uh, the rank, since it's item potent, and if you watch my video called Item Potent Matrices, that's really just the trace. And then in previous videos, we've looked at the trace of these. And really, so this is, you know, X, X transpose, X inverse, X transpose. And then you can manipulate the matrices around and it makes it the identity. And it's a K plus one rank. And this is K because we have one last column. So it's rank of one. And that's going to play a part in our distribution. So now let's look at the expected value of this type 2 sum of squares so in matrix form so remember this is the addition in the regression sum of squares when beta i is added to the model that already contains all the other beta parameters and we just showed that it's this quadratic form now we're going to I'm going to defer to a video I have called mean variance covariance of quadratic forms and then from there you can instantly just know that it's this answer. So it's the trace of this matrix times the variance of y, which is sigma squared i, and then it's plus the mean, this matrix, the mean, and that's what we get here. So this is a constant, can come out front, identity times that, and then the trace of this we said was one, so we just get sigma squared. And then over here, nothing reduces. So this is it, so this is the uh, distribution or let me rephrase that, it's the mean of that type 2 sum of squares. And it's, it's always sigma squared or, or greater. And the reason you know that, this is a item potent matrix. And item potent matrices are always positive semi-definite. And so this is uh, always zero or more. And so and actually one trick that we try to do in hypothesis tests is we make conditions that on the beta parameters that make this zero so you know on average it's sigma squared and then we, we're dividing by you know the mean square error and so it tends to be one but if the conditions aren't met then it tends to be more than you know sigma squared this tends to be a positive number which adds to it which then shoves that test statistic into the tail of the f distribution Anyway, but I digress. More on that when we get into hypothesis testing. So the distribution of this type 2 sum of squares, I'm going to defer to distribution of quadratic forms. 
and PV28, where we do it for uh, in a little more detail for type 1 sum of squares. And PV28 means previous video, and it's 28th in my playlist. And so the distribution of this, watching this video and maybe the previous video, we know it's a chi-squared with one degree of freedom, and that means the rank of this matrix. And it has a, a non-centrality parameter of this. And that's it. So that's type 2 sum of squares. But there's one, I want to look at the general case. So we've covered type 1, type 2, and there's something called partial F test, where you look at a subset of beta parameters to be 0 or not. And in that case, we need to develop the general notation of this R. And remember, R is the increase in the sum of squares regression when you add these beta parameters to the beta parameters that are already in the model. And that can be generically done. In type 1, we're only adding one uh, you know, beta parameter at a time. In type 2 sum of squares, we're only adding, you know, we're looking at one, the increase in one beta parameter. But why not do several at a time? And that's what this case is going to handle, especially when we get into hypothesis testing. So R beta I and beta minus I. Now the parentheses, and again, this notation is kind of mine and not always used by everyone. Now beta I, I'm in an I's in parentheses, means there's I beta parameters in this vector. So note that there's a vector, right? And then so this vector um, is everything but you know, the I beta parameters in this vector, right? And so it contains the remaining uh, K minus I plus 1 vectors. So let's say if we have 10 vector, 10 uh, regressors, and we want to see if three of them are contributing to the model. We want to just test three at a time. So there'd be three beta parameters here, and then there's seven here. And then we look at the sum of squares regression increase when we add those three beta parameters over these already seven in the model. So it's this. So it's the reg now when when we add them all into the model, that's just the original beta parameter, and then minus the sum of squares regression without these i beta parameters in it. And then of course we can look at in matrix notation it goes to this where this is the hat matrix of the full model and then this goes to this where this is the hat matrix of that reduced model left factor right factor J's cancel we get this now the same you know argument that this is a perpendicular projection matrix it's symmetric it's item potent it has a rank of I right this is um, rank of K plus 1 and this is k plus 1 minus i, so it, we're, we're left with i. So the distribution of this type 1, or not type 1, but this uh, quantity, which is the increase in the sum of squares regression when we add these parameters, when these are already in the model, is this. So we look, which we determined in matrix notation was this. So the distribution of this quantity is, it's, uh, and so it's, actually it should be divided by sigma squared. Um, so, oh, my pen's had a, picked a good time to not work. So this is sigma squared. I'm so sorry about butchering that text. So the, it, the distribution is chi-squared with I degrees of freedom. And that's because of the rank of this matrix is I. And then the non-centrality parameter is the mean of Y. This matrix, the mean of Y. And of course, sigma squared follows. Um, yep. And so when we do tests... What we do is we put the, the conditions on the beta parameter. So the, the
the three or the you know the I beta parameters here we say are they zero or not and when you make those zero in the, and put them in this quadratic form then this goes to zero and so it ends up being a central chi-squared which then makes the overall test a central F test but more on that when we get to hypothesis testing which we start in the next video video 30 in the playlist well that's all I have for today hopefully you enjoyed that I sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye